When Caden Gooley steps on the ice, expect this. It only got steamrolled by Caden Gooley just inside the Raider line. Gooley responds to every action with an elevated reaction of explosive force. But he's a lot more than just a hit hunter. He landed number 50 in EP Ringside's top 100 prospects entering the season for a reason. He's arguably the CHL's premier play killer, with the potential to become so much more. Let's try to measure Gooley's impact first. Junior hockey doesn't have many publicly available statistics, so I track a bunch of stuff manually. Exits, entries, offensive contributions, rush defense, defensive zone breakups, and more. I weight all that out and put it into one stat called game score. In this sample, Gooley leads his team by a hefty margin, and that's with most of the emphasis being placed on offense. In fact, he's just one of two defensemen of this 22-team data set that leads his team, the other being top 2022 draft eligible Denton Matejak. This chart really shows just how good Gooley's defense is. The horizontal axis is the percentage of entry attempts against that the player breaks up. It's basically a measure of defending the rush. The vertical axis is a volume-based metric that combines D-zone breakups, interceptions, forced dump-ins, pressured shots, and more. He's essentially the top player in both. He combines the physicality with controlled yet explosive defensive skating. The details are visible here, where he beats the attacker to the middle with his feet, keeps his stick on the inside, and then forces the dump in. When attackers get close, he widens his base and rocks back and forth on his inside edges to build speed instead of crossovers. A poorly timed crossover can be exploited by skilled attackers. Gooley's method helps reduce that chance. If he's going to step up in the neutral zone, he times it with the incoming pass, which prevents the attacker from deking around him. Where many players lunge forward or concede ground, Gooley keeps a tight gap off puck, which sets up hits like these. In uncertain situations, he used to just apply more pressure. Now he plays a more calculated game without losing the aggression. By not trying to destroy this guy, he's able to quickly switch to a different player and prevent the entry. And he's explosive, erasing huge swaths of ice without much hassle or recovering on a rare mistake. The way that Gooley engages minimizes risk too. Plays like these where he lunges forward in a desperate bid to make contact don't appear regularly in his game anymore. He's in great defensive posture here, knees bent, distance between his feet, head up. As the puck comes to the attacker, he stops his backwards momentum and then drives his outside leg forward while pushing off his rear leg. He keeps his hands in front, which allows him to slam players to the ice like this, wrap them up, or shove them into the boards. And like every great hitter, he uses his legs to drive the attacker's lower half into the boards and then pulls their feet out from underneath them. It's the same inside the D-zone. Here he's leaning on top of his check stick and just as the puck comes near, he switches and goes under to prevent a pass reception or deflection. Again, he times this engagement with the incoming puck and then it becomes a battle. Gooley enters these battles with such desperation, using his legs trying to get in front of the attackers and then crunching them into the boards to win possession. It's clear that Gooley will be a more than capable defender in the NHL, but that wasn't ever really in question. The puck skills, however, were. While Gooley's 0.82 points per game best the team's leading point getter, most of these points aren't particularly inspiring. And it's true, Prince Albert isn't exactly an environment conducive to scoring, averaging just 1.8 goals per game at even strength. And this chart shows that they don't create much offense individually, recording the lowest average individual expected goals per 60 in the 22 team dataset. Still, Gooley's far from a breakout wizard or offensive dynamo. On exits, he's mostly a simple player who hammers pucks off the glass and out instead of delaying or using the inside for a controlled play. He tries to outrace pressure instead of cutting back. Pucks inexplicably roll off his stick even without pressure. He can create something here, but he loses it and then decides to simply get rid of it. He's not deceptive or at least doesn't realize how to read defenders. He has the D's feet turned to the outside here. He just has to continue up the middle. Instead, it's a messy entry that becomes a turnover. And then there's the shooting. He takes these no traffic shots that are basically just turnovers, he doesn't step into space before firing, and he misses opportunities like these to set up teammates for high quality looks. 
But the overshooting, the lack of deception, and the seemingly risk-averse puck game aren't exclusive to him. It's everyone on Prince Albert, a team with three NHL first round picks. And honestly, the more that I watched Gooley, the more impressed I was with his skill. On retrievals, Gooley generally does the things conducive to transition impact. He turns away from pressure and positions himself to pass to the middle for a breakout. Again, he seals off pressure and then makes a quick pass to an open teammate. If given some space, he turns to face the slot upon reception to identify threats and options. He'll sneak a pass through pressure to the inside or beat a four-checker into a passing lane. And then, out of nowhere, he'll use a hesitation move to deke around a four-checker and then pass cross ice. He clearly wants to activate into the play regularly. He makes passes with his feet moving and then sprints up the ice to become an option. This is a solid finish too, elevating his top hand while hanging on to that outside edge to shoot the puck from inside his feet and basically throw it into the top corner of the net. But his teammates don't seem to be expecting activation, largely because Prince Albert rarely does it. Gouli's found the right space, but his teammate goes for the perfect play that fails. This isn't perfect on Gouli's part, but this return pass isn't even remotely close. Same thing here, letting Gouli's work go to waste. He even tries more advanced plays, like this give and go from the point to get the puck on the inside, but his teammate just wasn't reading it. And after piling up all these mindless shots, Gouli will step into space, pump fake, and create a chance for himself. This isn't exactly smooth, but he's aggressive, trying to make something happen instead of just hammering away. He'll occasionally fake the shot and then pass to a teammate on the inside, who usually doesn't do anything with the puck. And he even shows some great vision, like linking together this lateral movement with a shot pass to a teammate into the slot. At the very least, he's a dependable, regular pincher who keeps his team's offense flowing. It's clear that Gooley can abide by modern offensive and transition principles. He's not short on skill, he just doesn't get many opportunities to show it in his current environment. That's not to say that Gooley will become a dynamic offensive player on a different team. And I think there's some merit anyway to the idea that if he hasn't started doing it regularly by now, he probably won't do it in the future. But it's clear that he has the tools to become much more impactful. He just needs development. Given his advanced, destructive defensive game, he doesn't need to become an offensive creator or a dynamic transition threat. He just needs to activate, shoot, and pass at the right times. Be a link in the offensive chain. If he does, he could become a middle pairing defenseman for the Canadians for years to come. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and then come on down to eprinkside.com for the full breakdown on Ghoulies game and plenty of upcoming World Juniors content.